in mind for what he wanted me to talk about tonight. Um, and I kept thinking about this past Easter. And we all pretty much, you know, know the story of um, God being crucified, or Jesus being crucified, and um, then raising from the dead three days later. Um, also, I don't know if y'all saw, saw where I had posted on um, Instagram, like the the book of the Bible. I mixed up the books. <laughs> um, we are actually going to look at Matthew 27, and it's going to be verses 62 through 66 and a little bit of chapter 28 too but um I just kept having this thought come to my mind um this morning going into work and it was just guarding an empty tomb um and I kept going back and just thinking about that and how silly those guards probably felt when the stone was no longer there and when they saw in there was no body there and um I just like, I just really felt the importance of Easter this morning, even though it's a little delayed, considering it was like two days ago. Um, but that's the perspective that um, Jesus kind of showed me um, this morning with that story was that the guards were guarding an empty tomb. So let's go ahead and read, let's see, 27. Let me see if I can get there. 62 through 66. No, Matthew. I'm so sorry. Luke was what I posted, I think. No, John, right? Yeah, you posted John. I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, John does talk about it. All of the, the Gospels do talk about the same stories, just in a different perspective. Um, but Matthew, Matthew what? Sorry. Matthew 27, 62 through 66. Very good. Um, but there was, I wanted to get the part about the guards and John actually does not mention the guards. And so I was like, did I really just hallucinate that whole image? And then I saw it in Matthew today at work. And, um, so verse 62 through 66, the next day, which followed the preparation day, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that while this deceiver was still alive, he said, After three days, I will rise again. So give orders that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come, steal him, and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception will be worse than the first. Take guards, Pilate told them. Go and make it as secure as you know how. They went and secured the tomb by setting a seal on the stone and placing the guards. And then 10, 28, we'll do verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Ma Magdalene and the other Mary went to, the, went to view the tomb. There was a violent earthquake because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards were so shaken by fear of him that they became like dead men. The angel told the women, don't be afraid because I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen, I have told you. So departing quickly from the tomb, with fear and great joy, they ran to tell his disciples the news. Just then Jesus met them and said, Greetings. They came up, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus told them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Um, so Jesus, he's crucified and he's buried. Um, but the part I want us to pay attention to is, um, the words that he kind of spoke before his death, which, um, was that he will rise in three days. Um, Jesus was dead, yet they still took the time to place a stone in front of the entrance, um, of the tomb. And then Pilate then sent guards to stand outside this tomb. Um, the only way in or out was through these guards. So the first thing I want us to look at actually isn't really in the scripture per se. It's two words, barricaded and guarded. 
Barricade means to block or defend with an improvised barrier. Guarded is to watch over in order to protect or control, protect against damage or harm. Christian guarding means being wise and discerning in our lives, protecting ourselves as Christians from all the things um, that would come to harm us in this world. And the reason why I want us to know the differences between these is because originally when I was looking at this, um, guarding an empty tomb, I don't want y'all to think I'm saying don't guard your hearts. Don't guard what's important to you because you need to. If it's important, guard it. But there is a difference. You're still letting people in and out, but you're being careful as to who you choose and what you let them know about you. Um, barricading is you're isolating. So Jesus's body wasn't just being guarded, as they say in this scripture. It was being barricaded in. And I think sometimes we think we are guarding our hearts and our thoughts and our dreams by not sharing them with others or asking for prayer because that I hate asking for prayer. I really do. Um, or we hide our sins. We hide our struggles. Um, we pretend everything is fine when it's not. And usually what's our response when someone asks how we're doing? It's, oh, I'm fine. Actually, I'm doing really great. And we just wave it on. And why do we do that? We don't think the person asking can really handle the reality of our situations. That's the majority of the reason. There's other times where we just, we just want to move on. We're very fast about our responses. Um, but what we don't realize is when we do that, that so-called guarding, uh, we are in actuality barricading ourselves in an already lonely place. And we are not allowing ourselves any light into that darkness. I think guarding our hearts and our minds and our bodies is incredibly important. Um, God places limitations on each of these in his word. And it's for a good reason. Because if we don't set a limit or draw a line, we allow for hurt and pain. Then we start to create that barricade. And guarding doesn't completely remove the hurt. I don't want y'all to think that either. Um, but it allows for less of it. And it protects your heart from the hard truths about this world. And it provides you provides you with the truths that Jesus wants to fill our hearts with. And the first step to guarding your heart is knowing who you are in Christ. Um, if we don't know our Father in Heaven, like what He says we are, then we allow our tombs that we create in our lives to be filled with the lies of the enemy. And that's what I want us to start off with, is just knowing the differences between those two. So, the second point of this passage um, is what's guarded can be gardened by Jesus. Guarding can have two goals. It can either keep something in or it can keep something out. Um, there have been moments in my own life where I have guarded more so, barricaded um, my sins, the hardships life has just kind of thrown at me, um, the mountains I was climbing, I hid behind a smile, and uh, I'm doing good. Um, it wasn't until those trials started to affect my physical appearance that I had a few people notice, but by then I had already barricaded myself in. And I was no longer guarding my heart from the shame or the guilt or whatever it was. I had just fully isolated myself in that darkness. And I want y'all to know that nothing grows in the dark. That's why Jesus is referred to as light. Um, and in this passage, let's see if I can find it. Maybe not. Because I, oh, my bad. I literally put it right in front of me. <laughs> um, so in John, what I was originally reading, um, what is surrounding this tomb? In John 19, 41 through 42, it states that there was a garden in place of where Jesus had been crucified. He turned a grave into a garden. And in that garden was the tomb where his body lay until he rose again. So barricading and closing yourself and your heart off does not allow for growth, okay? There's a reason why his grave was turned into a garden. Not giving your sin, your struggles, and even your dreams and desires to Jesus does not allow for him to work freely within them. 
if there was work to be done in that tomb, Jesus would have stayed. But he left. His work, his ministry was outside of the darkness. His purpose for his death was outside of the tomb. God was calling him to something much greater. And he knew that. And God um, has greater for you. He has greater for me than what is just in our empty tombs. And I think we get so focused on just guarding what's in that tomb. And we're in reality, when it's compared to the growth that God can do with it, that's why I say it's still an empty tomb. Because you're not going to gain anything from that. You're not going to grow anything from what's there because you're not giving it to God. And um, God has a purpose for you. He has a calling for you. And he wants to use you if He if you let him. Um, and when I was explaining the differences between barricaded and guarded, when I made the reference to um, when people ask us, like, how are you doing? And we're like, all right, we're doing great. We're doing fine. Um, and I said that the person doesn't, we feel that the person can't always handle the reality of our situations. So we say we're fine and we move on. And God is saying, give me the truth. Pour your heart out into me. I can handle the truth. I am the truth. I already know your truth. I am the light. Please give it to me. And we still want to hide in the darkness with whatever it is, whether it is our sin or it's this bad season of life. Because we can have really rough, bad seasons, but they can still produce growth if we allow that. And as Jesus hung on that cross, he was thinking of you. As Jesus rose from the grave, he was thinking of you. Everything he did and endured was because of his great love for each and every one of us. Your struggle with sin, give it to Jesus. Your struggle with anxiety, depression, give it to Jesus. You don't know what's next in life, give it to Jesus. And these are all points that I have struggled with in the past week, okay? You're worried, overwhelmed, stressed, give it to Jesus. You have a desire to be married, give it to Jesus. Desire to have kids, give it to Jesus. You have a desire to work with children, but you're working with adults right now? Guess what? You gotta give it to Jesus. And you got to laugh off every situation that's handed to you. Even if it's a crazy lady thinking we're going through a tornado and we're not. So, he will never get tired of hearing your voice. Um, he will never get tired of comforting you. And he will never get tired of walking with you. Um, he will never get tired. You know why? That's why he died on the cross. That was his purpose. That was his calling. Jesus, uh, God sent him here, his son for a reason and he did all of that on the cross and it was all for each and every one of us and my last little point is no barrier will stall Jesus Jesus had a stone in front of that tomb and guards in front of that stone and during this time frame when God, when guards were told to secure something or someone and that person or whatever it was gets out of their grasp um, or they weren't able to guard well, um, they were actually put to death. Even if one guard were to fall asleep in one of their sections, they have a fancy name for it. I forget what it is, but it's like in, it's like in sections of four and then they get sent out in 16s. I don't know. That's weird, but we're going to call it a section. Not only would the guard who fell asleep be put to death, but so would the rest of the guards in his section. So talk about accountability. That would be terrifying. So these guards are guarding Jesus, the one who everyone yelled to persecute and crucify. And they did their job only to find out Jesus had other plans and he yeeted on out of there and they didn't even see a move. And now their life is on the line. And Jesus will overcome every mountain in your life. He will overcome every challenge, temptation, and sin. Jesus will give you everything you need in the season you're in. But there is no need in guarding our, um, cause sometimes we like to put Jesus in this box, um, and say he will only work when there's this happening or he only works if you do this. And I've even encountered people who tell me like, well, you're not seeing him do this because you're not doing that. And it's like, that's not it. <laughs> Thank you, but that's not it. That's a box that you are putting 
Jesus in. Jesus works and moves every day, every season, and every moment in your life. There is no need to guard or put him in a box or guard whatever is going on in your life because he can use it and he can use it for your benefit and your good if you just give it to him. And Jesus makes a way when there is no way. And there's actually verse 7 in chapter 20. 20. You know good and well what I mean. Maybe. I don't know. I think I've mixed it up again. 27? Mm-mm. My notes don't make sense. I was literally typing this as the patient was still screaming, uh, son of a witch at me across the hall after I had to like, you know, restrain her. So she was a little angry and my thoughts were a little jumbled. Oh, I know where it's at. Just kidding. And it's not 20 or seven. I don't know where I got these numbers. Um, it says in uh, chapter 28, Verse 7, let's see. Then go quickly. Oh, it says, Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And I want us to key into the part where he is going ahead of you to Galilee. Jesus is behind you, he's beside you, and he is ahead of you. He will walk you through what you're going through and still be right there when you get to where you're going because that's exactly where he wanted you and I think sometimes we feel like we're waiting on the Lord to do these things God's already where he where you're about to be and he's beside you there is no waiting on him there is no waiting on him he's probably waiting on you and I think that's an important concept to know because Jesus has everything planned out and um <clears throat> yes we need to wait on like him to I guess kind of give us what we need for the next season or whatever it may be like for me I've been trying to figure out what my next step is and I was actually telling someone last week well I'm just waiting on God but I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs I'm not really putting myself to work <laughs> Um, and God's probably waiting on my actions to get serious about what I want to do next, because there are a lot of options that I have rumbling around in my brain and none of them is staying where I'm at. And I have been so focused on, well, whatever happens will happen. God's going to, God is going to provide. I'm not saying that, but it's like Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. You need only to be still after you've already done your part. That is when I can finally put my hands up because I've already done everything I can do. It's just like being a nurse. There are some days I walk away and I'm like, I just nailed that day. I did great. I got every nursing skill that I needed done, done. Days like today, I stayed late today trying to finish things that I thought I had time to do and I did not have time to do any of them. And, um, but I know I did my very best at the end of that. And so there's only so much that we can do. And I think sometimes we like to push that boundary. And that is all I have for y'all. I'm sorry, it's not like, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what y'all expect out of these Bible studies. Half the time it's just gonna be me rambling and some side thoughts and it's gonna be misplaced chapters um so I'm just glad you all kind of roll with it <laughs> at this point but thoughts comments anything y'all want to say add